In this video, I explain how to derive the rate law for uncompetitive inhibition. I strongly recommend you to watch first competitive and then non-competitive before you watch this video. As a matter of fact, I'm actually not going to do the entire derivation because it's very, very similar to those other two. I'm just going to uh, guide you through the setup and then I'll let you solve it and, and I'll write the final expression. That will be it. Right. Uh, uncompetitive inhibition is uh, one in which the inhibitor can only bind uh, to the enzyme subject complex, not to the free enzyme, and generate uh, a complex uh, ESI, and then uh, that has a dissociation constant of ESI over ESI. We can talk a little bit about the mechanism for this type of binding. So, so one of the things that you could think about is, uh, well, how is it possible that the inhibitor can only bind to the enzyme subset complex. Well, you can imagine that uh, the enzyme might have uh, one active site that is clearly formed and another one that is not fully formed, right? So uh, the substrate can bind to that active site and only after it has bound, okay, so only after you actually have uh, the substrate bound right there, okay, then the other side, which was in kind of a, you know, proto form, uh, can form and then the inhibitor can bind in. Okay, so, so that's why you actually need the substrate bound to the enzyme before the inhibitor can bind. Right, so that's the, uh, a cartoon representation of how this would work. Right, um, to the rate rate law, the setup is simply going to be uh, much as before, the rate is going to be equal to uh, this. Okay, and uh, the steps to obtain this ES is going to be exactly the same. You set up the mass loss of the enzyme and then you just find the terms. The mass balance of the enzyme is going to have three terms. Uh, the initial concentration of enzyme is going to be equal to free enzyme, ES, and ESI. Okay, this concentration you can obtain from the steady state approximation, much as we have done in non-competitive inhibition. Uh, that is something that you want to, uh, to solve for, and this you can actually get only from that. Okay, so you would set up the mass balance of the enzyme expression, then put everything as a function of ES, solve for ES, and then plug it back in here and find what the rate is. Well, uh, after you do all that, uh, the rate is just going to be equal to Vmax, concentration of substrate over K sub M plus concentration of S over alpha prime, where this alpha prime is just going to be equal to 1 plus uh, K sub I prime, sorry, the other way around, 1 plus concentration of inhibitor over K sub I. Well, uh, much as before, if the, uh, the concentration of inhibitor is zero, then you recover uh, the original Michelson-Mentin uninhibited uh, rate. But as soon as this is larger than zero, then all these denominators are larger than it was before, and then the rate goes down, which is uh, what is going to modulate the reactivity of that uh, enzyme catalyzed reaction. Okay, so this is uh, uncompetitive inhibition. And with this, we uh, finish all three types of inhibition that we're going to see this semester.